So making the system bootable, we've got one more package to install now. So let's go back to our sources directory and we need to extract the Linux tarball. So the first thing we do is we patch up the version, fix it up to the latest version that this book uses, and then we clean the source directory. Okay, and then it says a good thing to do is to start with make def config, so that's a good idea. And then it's got a few kernel selections that we need to check. So let's do make menu config now. And check that these options are set as they should be. So device drivers, generic driver options. And the first one we need to look for is path to U event helper, which is that second one there. And that's got to be blank. So it's got the actual kernel configuration parameter name there. So you can find it out by doing help and it's that name there. So you can see that we have definitely got the right option. It's always worth checking if you're unsure. So we need to select that to edit it and we'll just basically delete that and hit enter to accept it. Next one is maintain a dev temp fs file system to mount at dev and that option is called dev temp fs. So it looks like it's that one. Let's just do help again. Yep, that's the same configuration and it's already set so we don't need to do anything with that one then we've got fallback user help user helper invocation for firmware loading so there's that one there let's just double check the config name again fw loader user helper well this one's called fallback so that might not be the same one unless the name's changed of course because the description has got the word fallback in it firmware loading, yeah the description's identical so this may have changed this configuration option uh, this, this configuration name what we can do is if you type in forward slash you can actually search for the config so if we search for this alright oh, yes there is a an option called forward loader user helper and it's already set to no anyway you can see that's the option as it's set and that's because the option is actually blank as it is so it's actually set correctly um, it says that this option's selected by loader user helper fallback and loader user helper fallback is the option that we were looking at so it looks like the original option has been hidden by another option that sits on top on top of it which is the one we're looking at so this option actually sets the correct config so if we set this to yes it would set this option here to yes so by setting this one to no although it's not directly the one we want to do indirectly indirectly it is setting this option so it is correct to set this to no as it was originally so that's fine so there's no other options that it's saying we need to check so we can exit now yes we do want to save the configuration and we can now build the kernel
Okay, so the kernel's built correctly. We can install the modules and firmware. And then we copy the kernel into the boot directory with the system map file with something that says symbols in there and the config file we're using. So I'm making it bootable. So like I said, this is the bit I'm not going to do um, because, well, I suppose I could do it within the virtual environment and prove it boots, but it doesn't prove that it's been built to the 486 specification. So it's a, a little bit pointless, really. Um, so I'm just going to go straight to the end. Put in a release file. So we know if we have come back to this to have a look to see when it was built. Now this is quite important depending on what you plan on doing with your cross Linux from scratch. Um, it's basically saying there's no way for getting files, uh, you know, further source files to expand the um, cross Linux from scratch system or indeed if you wish to build Linux from scratch on top of it. So there's several suggestions here on um, obtaining or sorry, building various programs that will allow you to access um, you know, download these files. Now this all assumes that your network card is working, you've built that in and so on. Um, an alternative I would probably be inclined to do to get the 486 stuff running is to copy the source files you need, i.e. The, all the packages needed for Linux from scratch or whatever you plan on doing. Um, now, for example, at this point, get them into another sources directory, for example, ready for when you boot up on, on your target machine. So that, that will be an alternative that's not mentioned here, but it might be something you want to do to prepare so you actually have got network access. For example, you might want to do the install remotely. So to tidy up, we log out back to the main system. We unmount all the systems, all the virtual file systems we've got mounted. And well, the last bit says to unmount the CLFS system itself. I'm not going to do that because um, I'm going to prepare for transferring these files across onto the 486 machine. So if I just go back one, so that's the root of the system we've just built. Now, I won't be trying for space if I actually find out how big this is. I think it's just under, yeah, just under 4 gig. As I say, I've got 3 gig available, so I won't be copying the cross tools, the tools, or the sources directories. Now, the sources you may want because you may want to recompile something. Maybe something needs to be enabled, or, you know, um, something's not working right, you want to recompile it. So. I think I'm pretty sure by um, not transferring them. See that one's 700 meg. The sources that's one and a half gig, and the tools. Yeah, so that's two and a half. Uh, yeah, two and a half. Uh, yeah, just about three, three and a bit gigabytes. So um, you can see that that's not um, well. That's the bulk of the software here. So the rest of it's quite quite a tiny system. So that's what I'll be transferring over, um, and also make the transfer a lot quicker. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to prepare the. 486 machine ready for transfer of the files. Um, I wasn't going to do this, but I'll demonstrate transfer of files. It'll give an example of one way of doing this if, if you wish to follow this way. There are, are of course, other ways. Um, for example, if, if you're actually building the cross compile on a real machine, which is probably what you would do, I think, and, and you know, it's, it's what I would do. I'd, I'd use an existing, you know, my existing. Linux um, 
installation which is what I'm using now to do this demonstration to run this virtual machine on um, I would use that to build this up in a in a directory somewhere and I would then probably just plug in the drive using an external adapter maybe um, into a USB and transfer it that way that would probably be the easiest way probably the quickest as well but because it's a 486 and so on and it would just be too complicated to do that to take the hard disk out of one machine put it in this machine it's a virtual image anyway it's just overly complicated so it's simpler for me to transfer it over the network might not be the fastest method but it would certainly be most convenient I think so I'll, I'll demonstrate that being copied over and then when that's copied I'll set up um, a video where, where I'm um, booting the machine into this CLFS environment. <laughs> 